Well, remember there were six events that occurred at Calvary and that have been recorded here. And we broke them down into three hours and three hours. And we're now at part one of event 37, which is the second three hour period. The scripture tells us from the sixth hour to the ninth hour, there was darkness, tremendous darkness. That's from noon until three, when it normally wouldn't be dark. And there are two cries from the cross. Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabachthani. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But what did that mean? Well, it means that all of the sins, past, present, and future, came upon Jesus. Not his own, but ours. And he felt separated from God because sin separates from God. If you've, if you've never experienced that, you really haven't just paid attention. Because any time you sin, it separates you from God. And Jesus found the sins of the world for all of history falling on him. And he felt forsaken because he was separated from God. Now I know that that's really complicated when it comes to the Trinity. I mean, if Jesus is God, how can he be separated from himself? But you see, that's part of the mystery of the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We don't have anything like it, so we can't compare it with anything. In any case, he felt separated from God. And that was his first cry from the cross. Now, some in the crowd thought that he was calling Elijah. And someone said, let's wait and see if Elijah comes. Someone tried to give him sour wine. And we know that that didn't work. And then Jesus cried out a second time. And this cry was the opposite of the first cry. Because you see, uh, in John, and it's only in the Gospel of John, in chapter 19, verses 28 through 30, we find these words. Knowing that all things had already been accomplished, to fulfill the scriptures. All things had been accomplished to fulfill the scriptures. The Messiah had come. He would pay the price for the sins of mankind. He, he would be the provision for redemption. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they took a sponge full of the sour wine and upon a branch of hyssop and brought it to his mouth. Therefore Jesus, when he had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. You see, the first cry was probably one of anguish and pain and loud. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The second cry was one of pleasure, one of peace, one of a sense of accomplishment, because everything that was required by the scriptures had been fulfilled. Jesus had shed his blood for the remission of sins. It is finished. I have a license plate on the front of my car. <laughs> it says, it is finished. And small text underneath, this is John 19.30. And I remember I placed it there to be a witness that everything that could be done for you was done for you on the cross of Calvary. There's nothing more that could have been done for you. It's like when a doctor says, we've done all we can. <laughs> Dr. Jesus says he's done all that he can. He died for your sins to provide forgiveness for those that would trust in him. And so we find this, it is finished phrase on the bumper of my car. Uh, but I remember one of my neighbors who had hoped would be a witness to uh, said, I love your license plate. Well, 
as I discussed it with him, uh, he meant he'd seen me struggling building our sanctuary, the 1500 seat auditorium that was such a big task. And he had gone by many, many times over many months watching us work in that sanctuary to try to reduce the cost of what it would cost to build it. And he said, I'm glad you know that it is finished. The sanctuary is what he was talking about. And it just gave me a wonderful opportunity to tell him, no, no, no. Yes, it is wonderful that the sanctuary is finished. But everything that could be done for you was done for you on the cross of Calvary. And the words, it is finished, are the words of Jesus. And that's my thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day. Well, we do know that you can know that you're going to heaven. Most people say, I hope so. But uh, the scriptures in the book of Romans make it very clear. We've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Uh, that is, sin is anything that's displeasing to God, and we've all done things displeasing to God. So we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And God demonstrated his own love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's Romans 5, 8. So we are sinners, but Christ died for us. And then in Romans 5, 6, it says, while we were still helpless, that is, we couldn't do good enough works to earn our way into heaven. At the right time, Christ died for the ungodly, Romans 5, 6. We were helpless, but at the right time, Christ died for us. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. We all earned our wages, which is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Now. That means there's nothing we can do to earn it or deserve it. It's a free gift of God. It's by grace and grace alone. But that's not freedom to just continue in sin either. And the way that we receive it is in Romans 10 verse 9. If we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Well, I hope that you know for certain that you're going to heaven. I hope that you've turned away from sin and self turn to Jesus alone, who gives by grace eternal life. Yeah, yes, it, there is some surrender involved, and yes, there is a, a turning away from sin, but that's not how we earn heaven. We don't earn it. We, des we get it from him as a gift, and that's what the scripture says clearly. It's by grace and grace alone. God bless you, and have a great day.